Hi guys, it's Zach here and welcome to the sixth unit of our Java Wizard Game course. And today what we're going to do is we're going to be expanding our world completely. So now we have this level here that we've created that, you know, there's more to explore here, but we physically can't in the game. Why? Because we need a camera that's going to follow our character. So that's what we're going to make today. So let's go ahead and begin. Right off the bat, I'm going to create a new class and I'm going to name it camera. All right. And with our camera, I'm going to make a private float. It's going to be X and Y. Okay, because we need to have a X and Y positioning of our camera. I'm then going to create the constructor camera float X float Y and then just do a simple this dot X equals X this dot Y equals Y. All right, so this whole camera class is going to be really simple, but how we actually go about doing it is we're going to be using our graphics 2D method. So if you'll notice before in our render method, we're using a graphics G, but what we're going to do is convert this into a graphics 2D, which allows us to translate the actual rendering coordinates. It's really cool. Uh, let's go ahead and go and, and finish up the camera class and then... Uh, We'll, we'll dive right into that next. So here what I want to do is I'm going to say public void tick and I'm, I'm going to add in um, a game object here and I'll show you why in a second. All right and then what I'm going to do is just generate a bunch of getters and setters here. So getters and setters for our X and Y. Cool. So now in our tick, what we want to do is give those coordinates to be locked onto the, our character, right? So I'm going to say x plus equals, and here I'm just going to use a little tweening algorithm. It's going to be object.get x minus x minus 1000 divided by 2 multiplied by 0 0.05 F there we go and so this is just a little tweening algorithm that we use so that it it's not like completely locked on it like kind of like transition and smooths like you could say X equals object dot get X plus you know a thousand divided by 2 and that would like put the X position right in the middle so if you want to do that, you can, but this is just kind of like makes it like real smooth looking. And um, here we're going to do Y uh, and then this is going to be 563 and 0 0.5 as well. All right, so pretty simple. So let's go ahead and go into our game here. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new instance of our camera, so private camera, name it camera here. And then here we're going to go ahead and set up this camera. So camera equals new camera. It's going to start at zero, zero. All right. And now what we need to do is um, in our tick method, the reason we added in that game object was because we need to actually figure out, hey, which game object is our player? So I'm going to create a quick for loop int i equals zero. i is less than handler dot object dot size i plus plus. And then this is the same stuff that we're doing beforehand, right? So if we say if handler dot object dot get i dot get id equals id dot player. Then we're going to say camera dot tick handler.object.getI. Pretty simple, right? So all this is doing is looping through all of our objects, finding out which object is the player, and then putting that into the parameters of our camera that we need to use. So now let's go ahead and render that out because if we run the game now, as you can see, nothing is still happening, right? But that camera is actually working. So what we need to do, and it's actually a lot simpler than you may think. Uh, we're going to convert our graphics G into a graphics 2D. So I'm going to say, maybe not a caps lock there, graphics 2D. I'm going to name it G2D equals 
graphics 2D G. Okay, and this this right here in parentheses just casts that over to from our graphics, right? So now we say G2D dot translate, and it's going to be negative camera dot get x, negative camera dot get y. All right, and if we copy this and put it right here, and we just say camera x camera y, what's happening is everything between this and this is getting translated. So now let me show you something real quick. So if we go and run the game, as you can see, it's a, it's a little bit weird now, but we do have a camera going on here. All right, but because of double buffering, you know, there's, uh, <coughs> there's, um, it, it looks really weird, right? Because basically what's happening here is that we drew our background but our background is still getting translated. So we take this off and we say, let's put it above and we run it. Now you can see that it looks normal and we can now move around uh, the actual game. The reason it was happening before is because it had no background before because we were translating what we drew there. So uh, essentially what's happening is that even though it looks like the whole world's red, the actual background of our window isn't moving at all even though it looks like that. So when we get into like making tiles for our castle floor, then we'll have to translate that, of course, because it would look weird if the background like sort of, it, it, we can pull it off now because it's plain red and you can't notice the difference between textures moving. But when we do the actual castle floor, it's gonna look a little bit weird. So we gotta translate that, but that's okay because then we, we all we have to do is just draw it instead of just the first room, draw it across all four rooms. So now what we also have to do is see how we can sort of like move outside of the, our world here. Let's just, in our camera, clamp it so that we can't actually move around. So in the tick method, I'll say if x is less than or equal to zero, x equals zero. If x is greater than or equal to uh, 1032, x equals 10. 32. If y is less than or equal to 0, y equals 0. And if y is greater than or equal to 563 plus 16, y equals 563 plus 16. I was too lazy to do the math there. Um, and these are, I got this really quick because I already sort of debugged and figured out what worked there. So if we go ahead and run the game now, just in that tick method, now our camera will stop. <clears throat> And we probably need to do it one uh, one more shorter here, so maybe we'll do like 48. We'll see if that works out. Yeah, there you go. So now, like, you can get the bottom here, and you can get the side of it. Probably need to go a little bit more on the side, but now we can move around our world. This is actually really cool. So ne now, next time, what we're gonna do is look into collisions because technically you can still leave the world, even though our camera doesn't follow it. All right.